training with the Hawks is here this week with seniors Justin Brock and Courtney Belger from the men's basketball team. Guys, looking back on your careers at Quincy, what can you say has been the best part, the most memorable, or anything that really comes to mind for you guys? Uh, well, uh, the most memorable game for me was when we won that triple overtime game. Uh, came up a point short to go to the Elite Eight. Uh, besides that, just the, the last couple of games right now are the ones that stuck in my head from this past season. Yeah, that's pretty much um, pretty much the same thing. I liked how we uh, beat some D1 team, like one last year and won, uh, I think, two this year. That was pretty nice. And then a uh, win against Indy in overtime was nice. But uh, the game that's going to always stick out the most is the triple overtime game. Mm -hmm. And that was two years ago? Yeah, yeah, two years ago. So what's the, you said the D1 teams, what's the biggest one that comes, like, that you think of when you think of beating one of those teams? Our opening game at Drake was huge just because I mean, they always seem like they're on ESPN every now and then. They always seem like they're one of the more uh, popular Division One teams or more uh, well-known Division One teams we played against. And uh, definitely going to UIC in a regular season game was huge for us um, since that seemed to be the only place we had a good away game for the first half of the season. <laughs> All right. And what's the worst part or what do you try to forget? And this, I mean, this could be anything. Practice, that whatever. That weekend against William Jewel and the Rockers. Yeah, <laughs> that weekend we could, we could have got bad. And what what specifically about that weekend? We just took two uh, road losses because we probably wasn't focused, wasn't all on the same page. Uh, that, was, that was early in the season. Yeah, yeah so. our first two road games in, the, in our conference, and that, uh, that came to bite us at the end. So. All right. Would you do anything different? Over the years, do you have any regrets or anything? Uh, well, yeah, no. I don't have any regrets. No, I think that, you know everything happened for a reason. Um, it's you know it, it sucks that the season ended the way it did, but if I go back and change something, then something else may go wrong. So I, right. just, I like it as is. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. A lot of I think a lot of athletes might at the end of their four years say, "Oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I'd done that." But that's awesome that you guys are satisfied. Um, about the game last Sunday, okay. What was the team's energy like beforehand? Could you feel? Did you feel different? Did you feel like maybe this game was it? Was this game bigger than other games? Or how did you? How was the team overall feeling? I felt like you know, uh, personally, I knew it was our biggest game of the season. It was when I go home. So if, if anybody had a mindset of you know this game isn't the biggest one of the season, then they weren't meant to be in the locker room. And I didn't get that vibe at all. I felt like everybody was ready to go. Uh, if anything, I think we were too amped up. We came out, turned the ball over a lot, and then we were all just trying to get that early lead. And, uh, that kind of hurt us at the beginning. But um, came back in the second half, and fought, you know, fought, fought our lives out, and came up short. I think we, uh, I don't think nobody thought the season was going to be over. So mm -hmm. I feel like we all assumed it was going to kind of be a win if we just play hard with great energy and I think that maybe got us a little bit because now we like overlooked the team but I know for a fact everybody thought we were going to Springfield so that probably played a part in it. Uh, just kind of looking ahead too much maybe. All right as seniors what were some thoughts going through your head before the game? Um, well I think I was in the same boat as him I was ready to go to Springfield already <laughs> I mean the way we play at home uh, all year we put our best basketball so I was pretty confident coming into Sunday's game. Mm -hmm. uh, after the first half, not so much. But <laughs> yeah, I just felt like we was gonna pull it out. Um, it was just like any other game, really. I knew we were at home, so I knew we were gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was very confident, though. I was with Larry. Yeah. Okay, Courtney, where did the dunks come from? And how do you remain so calm and composed? after throwing one down when the entire Pepsi arena is on their feet yelling and screaming. You just kind of turn around, run back down the court like nothing happened. Where did that come from? Well, at first when I would get a dunk, I would get crazy and be all excited. <laughs> um, I start feeling real old for a little while, so <laughs> I didn't get any more dunks. And good passes came from good passes. Good passes came from Brock. <laughs> you know, he started finding me at the perfect times. And I, I don't really know. I just started feeling like really good. Um, maybe an ice bath before each game. I found out that was <laughs> a good trick. And then sometimes it just would be like a frustration dunk. So I didn't really feel like yelling. I just feel like 
I had to let that out yeah. and I run back down the court. Because sometimes it seemed like you would just pull one out when maybe the energy was kind of low or even with the fans or the team, and it just seemed like you would throw that dunk down and it would pick everybody back up again. So. Well, once I started getting them, like, I started getting a lot, kind of like the last five games or something, mm -hmm. and um, I just was sniffing them out, like really looking for <laughs> one. Like, if I seen a lane, I really would want them to give me the ball or give it to me because I know I could go up. Mm -hmm. I think I got one against um, – Springfield, and I pretty much called and I told Brock, like, as soon as you get the ball right here, I'm gonna be over there. And he just threw it, and it was like a perfect dunk. And they just start finding me a lot. <laughs> Brock, do you even feel that you had like four people guarding you at all times during games? I mean, <laughs> did you even know that there were other, you know, defensive players on the court, or did you just see the basket? Well, that's the thing. Uh, towards the end, it was definitely noticeable, more noticeable than before, but. Um, I mean, when they did that, I was able to find him for the dunk. Mm -hmm. So, I, mean, I know he's not complaining about it. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, when that happens, I just look to my team and hopefully they can, you know, make him pay for putting that many guys on. Because it seemed like some days it was just like nobody else was being guarded, but if you had the ball, everybody just flocked to you. And <laughs> there's, it almost looked like there was no way out, but you could always find a hole or some way. Right. Yeah. To score. Well, that's the thing in practice. Coach always did that. And in some drills, he'd throw an extra defender out, out on the court, and we just oh, have to really? find the upper man. We go six on five. So, uh, so you're ready for it. Yeah, we were much. pretty prepared. Good. All right, Courtney, can you explain how you had more dunks than Brock? And Brock, can you explain how you had more threes than Courtney? Because <laughs> <laughs> isn't that kind of like role reversal there. a little bit? I like that. That was backwards. <laughs> I like that. See, we know we pick each other up. You know, his gotcha. his weakness. My strength, my weakness, his strength. So there you go. That's what teammates do, right? Yeah. Because so maybe he caught us off guard. Maybe they sag on Brock, so he hit some threes. Maybe they do something. They also really have four guys on me, so I never really had the opportunity right. to dunk as much. Because I was really trying to get up a couple times. Brock I'll set me up for the lanes yeah. instead of me setting him up for the lanes. Yeah. That's just how it works. All right, so it's all strategy, right? Oh, you guys yeah, knew that was happening the whole yeah, time. Yeah, because I, I didn't feel like going over three guys. So it's like, I'll see right. if you take this. Much right, easier that way. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I always thought that was interesting all season. But so what's down the road for you guys? Will basketball kind of remain in your lives, coaching, playing, refereeing? No, I don't know. I, I can, Nobody uh, wants to be a referee. No, I got respect for those guys. But, uh, I'm still I decided on what, to, what I'm doing. I'm going to think it over the spring break, this whole week off, kind of reflect what I want to do, what sounds interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So stuff had basketball my entire life. I'm not sure where to go from now. I'm kind of right. in a hole just thinking about it. Um, I'm pretty much, if I could try to play somewhere, I'll try to play. I don't know. But if not, I'll come back, maybe get my master's, be a grad assistant, um, try to coach, maybe just stay like maybe Kevin's job here for a while or go to Western hmm. and try to be with JD, you know, coach with him or something. Yeah. But, if not, I just would try to keep playing or something. I'm not that old. I'm still <laughs> old. <laughs> so would you would you be able to coach girls, do you think? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a different world, let me tell you. I, I mean, I would be more like a developmental coach where mm. just put you through some drills. I'm not going to like really coach X's and O's. So what if she starts crying? What if you're pushing her too hard? Well, then. I don't think in college nobody's going to cry. It's <laughs> probably more drama in guys' basketball than there is in women's basketball. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does Hawk basketball mean to you guys now that you're that you're finished, that you're moving on and everything? Uh, it's a pride thing, um, seeing how, how we have all these supporters and people in the community coming out every night and supporting us all through the year and uh, things like that. And, I'm happy that now I've become a part of that, and I can come to the games next year, uh, depending on what I'm doing. But I'm going to try to make it to most of the games next year since I just live down the road. But uh, definitely has a, have a respect for everyone involved with the uh, Quincy University. I really just like seeing it like grow over the years, kind of, because my freshman year we weren't really as good, and we were all kind of like new faces, so people really wasn't, I don't know, they really wasn't like familiar with us. And then over the next three or four years, people really just start coming out, start knowing who we were in the community, and mm -hmm. just being like so nice and um, friendly and stuff. And then we even had like, the student section this past year was like the best I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And they just really uh, 
didn't care what was going on with school. They would always make sure they came to our games. So I really appreciate it. So you just like the support and the respect that you guys get. Definitely. Yeah. What will you miss the most? Playing in front of the crowd, wearing the Quincy University jersey. Yeah, playing in front of the crowd. And I also miss uh, miss Coach because I feel like he just, I don't really know how to say it, but I feel like he just got better every year as far as like our relationship mm -hmm. and me being able to talk to him and approach him more and we trust each other. We were kind of on the same level a lot. He was just, every year it seemed like just straightforward. He never like said anything and then really it was like going to be a different route or something like that. He made sure he was like 100% with you as he could be. Yeah, I agree with that. Coach Bell, players coach, really easy to talk to. Takes what you have into consideration. So. Awesome. It was easy to go to him whenever we had a problem or had a question or anything. What did you guys think of the uh, Fathead poster that was sitting down here towards the end of the season? Did you guys get a kick out of that, was or was it a distraction? Yeah, it was a good shot. <laughs> coming out, warming up, we all just looked at each other and started laughing. That was the best. <laughs> I would say. Um, and two incoming basketball freshmen, do you have any words of advice, encouragement, preparation, warnings, anything that they should be ready for? Enjoy it while they can. I would say it flies by, but I had six years, so it kind of <laughs> didn't really fly, didn't really fly, fly by, but I mean, enjoy it while you can, because it won't be there, you know, forever. Yeah, don't take it for granted. We um, we took our, maybe our success as our sophomore year. Like, we'll get back, we'll get back, and then you see us, like, work so hard and stuff, and then you don't get back. That just should be, like, a story to motivate you if you're, like, freshman or incoming freshman or whatever, to, like, continually work hard and try to push through, and then... They need to just make sure in the off season or preseason, be ready when you get here because once you like fall out of that rotation or whatever, it's gonna be kind of hard for them to really look at you as an impact player throughout the season or whatever. So you gotta make sure you get here early, work hard, earn your spot, and be ready for Coach Perry because he's gonna be on another yeah. level. <laughs> once the first week of school starts, that's when basketball it, it's starts. Out. So it's you gotta be ready to go when you get here. It's kind of never ending then, huh? Yes. Beginning to end. Pretty much. That's right. All sure. right. Well, thank you very much, guys. You had excellent careers at QU, so thank you. good luck in the future.